Good morning. So we this is I can't remember seeing quite so many people for this session. I'm thrilled that you're all here. I always <coughs> like today because it feels a little bit like we're getting started, right? All the people who are brand new to Science Olympiad, maybe if you've not been an event coach before, raise your hand. So just in case you think you're alone and you're in this situation, you're not. So there, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come out today. Today is about making you guys as successful as you can be. Uh, and hopefully, you know, this is the start of the fun, right? I got involved with this many, many years ago. I'm John Ogden, by the way. I work with many other volunteers that you'll see around here today, all wearing red shirts um, that uh, run the elementary tournament committee. We're all volunteers. We're here because we think this is a fantastic program for kids. All of my kids, they're all in college and beyond now, came and participated in Science Olympiad. I think it's a fantastic program. So we're going to talk today a little bit about uh, what you might be thinking about to be a more successful event coach. Right? That's why I'm taking the time to, to talk today. So um, let's dive in. So I found in past years when I've had this discussion, I needed to talk about um, what the schedule is, what's going on. First, here's our index of what we're going to talk about. And let me say, everything that you see here today in the session right now, in the sessions that you have with the event supervisors that you'll be meeting later in the morning, uh, all of the material will be posted on our website. If you haven't seen the Macomb Science Olympiad website, macombso.org is our website. Lots of great resources there. If you haven't seen the event page for the event that you're coaching, you need to go find that because we put a lot of energy into trying to uh, give you resources that are helpful, okay? So, uh, so you don't need to write down what I'm gonna talk about today because there'll be a copy out there by the end of today. All right, so we're gonna talk about uh, what the season calendar is and what some of the resources, the kits that are available to you if your team hasn't ordered any. Uh, we're going to talk about what's success for your team because that's going to drive to some degree how you decide to coach your, your kids. Uh, what your primary jobs are, how to get it done, finding and building resources, thinking about the stages of the season because how you behave as an event coach will change as the season goes on. And then at the end, I'd like to get your questions uh, and feedback. So let's dive into that. So here's a calendar. Starting in, you will see your team formed hopefully by December. You guys are all here. I mean, that's event coach training is today. Uh, over this time period between now and May, you're, you guys are going to be practicing, right? There's, a, there's some stopping points along the way. Every team here is invited to a practice tournament. There are three, I'll say the big three, which are the three big districts who uh, hold a practice tournament specifically for the schools in their district. So if you're Utica, Chippewa Valley, or Lance Cruz, you're in that category. If you're not one of those districts, then you're invited to the South Macomb tournament, and your head coach should be telling you about that. And you can see that there are specific dates for those individual practice tournaments. Okay, and then our goal is to finally get to the, the tournament here on May 18th. Please reserve your calendar for that day. There, there will be plenty for you to do to keep, keep yourself occupied all day long. In between, we have some things that go on in terms of like workshops that your event teams will be able to participate in. And we also will try to get some practice launch schedules scheduled for the Water Rockets event so that if you, if you don't have your own launcher, you'll be able to come and maybe get a couple practice launches in. Uh, and that's, uh, as always, weather dependent uh, when, we, uh, when we get those scheduled. All right. Did I? Okay, good. All right. Many of the teams have already ordered quick start kits. This is just a list of what's available. If uh, you're coaching one of these eight events that we have a kit associated with, um, you might consider using that. Th these are not required. This is a convenience for you to help you get started. So it's just less work for you. Uh, so if you have any questions on those, there's one that's specifically sold out because we take pre-orders. And if you're uh, on the Rock event, we, will, we are delivering the kits today that were ordered. But if you haven't ordered one already, you'll have to wait to get the delivery, OK? Because we need to order more supplies. OK, what's success for your team? 
possible answers to that. Have fun. This is hopefully, if you're not having fun, then there's probably a problem overall, right? Do better than last year. Be number one. If you're a brand new team, I caution you about the be number one, because there's a lot of hardworking teams that come to this program, which is always very exciting. I'm always just amazed at how well the students do on very challenging topics. But uh, you want to be cautious about how you set that expectation with the students you're working with. The one I like is do doing the best we can. I, I always tried to get the kids into, and I say, when I was coaching elementary, I'm still coaching uh, kids at the high school level in Science Olympiad. You know, let's do our best. Let's try to be successful, and then you know the, and find the satisfaction of that loop, and and then try to get bring them back the next year and say, okay, we're going to buckle down again and work hard, and and see the satisfaction, the personal satisfaction of having done a job, done a job well. So this is this is how my brain works here. Your primary job as an event coach is to try to make it simple for the kids. So that might seem daunting for you even like, so I'm not an, a biology person, so when I look at the anatomy event, I think, oh my gosh, there's so much material. That looks so complicated. Um, but your job is, as an event supervisor is to try to organize things and make it simple. So if I've got to coach that anatomy event for the kids, I'm going to break it down. Every week we're going to work on something different where you know take the full scope of all the things that the students need to learn and break it down so that they uh, so one that it's manageable and two the, the students can see the satisfaction of hey we're making progress we're learning uh, as they go forward so part of the things that you need to do is to provide age-appropriate materials so uh, sometimes our event supervisors will make recommendations about where you can find information uh, and there's a lot out there. The, the internet is a wonderful thing, uh, but there also has a lot of stuff that might not be appropriate for you as well, right? So it's certainly a, a bit of work sometimes to try to organize your materials. Um, so you're going to be meeting with the kids. You're either going to be helping them learn a topic. You're going to be learning a skill and practicing it. Uh, you might be building a design. We want the students to stay safe. So if you're doing something that requires tools, please exercise some caution. We're trying to be in that mode of you're not doing it for the kids, but then again, I don't want to see anyone with missing fingers and things like that, right? So we have our priorities. So uh, use, use good judgment. So another one of your jobs for your event team is to demonstrate commitment, because if you act committed as an event coach, the students on your team are going to, re going to reflect that back. Right? They'll, if you're acting like you're serious about it, they will be serious as well. So, and there are ways you can do that, as well as creating accountability, right? which maybe isn't all that different of an idea. But so if you say we're going to meet, and then you don't use the time effectively when you're meeting, that, that telegraphs something to the students, right? All right, so this is my recommendation for meeting. People will say, well, how long, should we, how long should a meeting go on? They're elementary students, so part of that question is, or part of the answer to that question is, is who are your students, what are they like? But f for me, I usually shoot for that, a 90-minute thought, because by the time you go through all the logistics of getting together and having a meeting and the, you know, everything that goes around it, 60 minutes starts, if, you, if, if you're only doing an hour, it starts to eat into that, and pretty soon it feels like you didn't have much time. Uh, so I, I lean toward a 90-minute thought, but you're probably in that 60 to 90-minute thought. My recommendation to you as a, in terms of creating a schedule is find a time during the week that's your time to meet. <laughs> Say, if it's Tuesday night, it's 7 o'clock, it's at my house, I'm the event coach, uh, my, my child's going to be there, hopefully you're doing this because you're getting to coach your own kid, uh, and there'll be another student who's going to show up. And hopefully, maybe Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is the time when both of your families have agreed that's the time that's going to work for you. It may not work every week, but if you, say, if you set the expectation that that's our time, then you can start managing the exceptions rather than all, every week trying to find a new time. When are we going to meet? When are we going to meet? Because if you do that, th the season will disappear. Right? You'll, you know, exceptions, things will get in the way every week. You won't be able to work it out. So pick your time during the week. Uh, so there's other things to consider. Like if you, 
Some schools try a lot of, or some schools will have meetings right after school or in the school building or whatever. You want to be thinking about what have the kids just been doing. So if they've just come off a, a school day, they may need to run around and burn off a little bit of energy before they're willing to sit down and have a conversation with you about uh, weather or rocks and minerals or whatever. So you know, think about how to keep make those kids successful. Set set them up for success. Uh, so I've commented a little bit about this discipline issue already. Uh, if you treat the time as important and valuable, that will help your kids behave the same way, okay? And then the other, the last dimension of this that I, I think about is in terms of motivation. Like, you know, how are you gonna get the kids excited about what's going on? Some of it might be in terms of helping your, the students understand that you have goals as an event team. What are you doing? How are you doing in terms of accomplishing those goals, including them in that thought so that they can feel that satisfaction. <laughs> Making it fun. If you're on the Zowie estimation event, man, there's got to be always something fun to eat with that one. You just, if it's sugar, you just want to make sure that they don't eat it at the beginning of the meeting as opposed to later in the meeting or something like that. The, my favorite one, for, from a motivation standpoint, I enjoyed nothing more than being in the school and seeing one of the students on the Science Olympiad team and maybe the principal's walking by or somebody else and pulling, pulling the principal aside and being able to talk to that principal about what great things my student was doing, right? The, the, the great things they were accomplishing. So praising those students in front of other people that who they care about is, a, I think, a great motivator. Okay, finding and building resources. This is a big part of your job is, you know, what, what resources are you going to be working with? If, hopefully, your team might have done this in the past, right? So if you don't know the name of the person who coached your event for your school in the past, you, that's something you need to do. You need to find out who they are because maybe they did this in the past and there's resources. Hopefully your head coach said, oh, well, here's the weather or not book that, you know, the notebook of all the, the information that we collected in the past. Maybe we have some practice tests that somebody already wrote or, or something like that, right? So I'm, I'm jumping around in my index, so let me get back to my slide here. So I, I skipped past number one, which is read your rules. You're going you're gonna to be talking about it today. You, maybe you've already read them. I hope you brought copies. You, you've, you've actually looked at them. If you don't have your rules, they're available on our website. You're going to read it today. You ought to read it a month from now, or at least once a month. Sit down and just read those rules again, because you, your perspective on what the rules say will change as you work through the season and as you learn what's going on. So uh, I just can't emphasize that enough. I've, been, I've made this mistake before. I've taken students to a tournament where they we, we missed a detail in the rules and they get disqualified. And that's a really depressing moment, I'll say. All right, it's an embarrassing moment. Uh, so, know what's available from us. So I've talked about this a little bit already. We've got, our website, has, it's so chock full of stuff already, we're losing things. We lose track of how much stuff we've got out there. So dig around. If you can't find what, something that you're looking for, ask your head coach. Send us an email. Say, hey, I'm looking for this. Do you have it? Don't, don't just be frustrated. Uh, we've got workshops. There's a list of workshops that's posted on our website. If you haven't seen it, you ought to be looking for that. Our FAQ system is, will launch this week. It's an opportunity. So today you're going to get a chance to ask the event supervisors questions about what's going on uh, for your event, get clarifications. But if you think of something next week, you can go onto our website and log your question. And our event supervisors will see that and create a response, and then we will post your question and answer on the website, and everybody will get to see that. So even if you don't have a question, you might go look and see, well, what's other what are other people asking about my event? Maybe there's something I should be thinking about, and I'll get a clue by seeing what other people are asking. Okay? Uh, we got the quick start kits. All right, so I already started on this point about asking other people for help. If you don't know who was your event, the event coach before you, you've got to find that out. Uh, I'm not really good at this particular idea. When I was a coach, finding information, creating is a learning task for the students, but I know people who are better at it than I am. So is there a way that you can structure the task that the students are doing so that, it be, so that they're more engaged, they're more <laughs> involved, right? So 
next week, you know, maybe we got five rocks that we're going to study and you know, letting the students go and collect some of the information about those so that when, when you come back and meet, they're bringing something to the meeting. That's, you know, that's a way to try to get them engaged in the learning process. I encourage it. I, as an event coach, I'm not great at doing it myself. And the last point I want to make is act like you own the event. So if you're putting to get, bringing together study materials, organize them. Be, you know, be the coach that you, want to, you wanted to be, have before you. Actually have a, have a notebook. You know, put materials into it. Be ready to hand off assets to the, to the person who's going to coach after you. Uh, you might be creating practice tests. Anyways. OK. This slide has a lot of detail on it. It's an idea. So I've, I've got information up here about three specific events. I haven't put a lot of energy into this slide for five years at least. And so I don't want you to think that whatever's on here is the end all of, for particular events. So, but, so for instance, Amazing Arthropods, very much a, a, it's a knowledge based, a lot of information being memorized, things like that. So, you're, just like with a lot of events, your job is to organize things, go out and find those resources. Our event supervisor has posted some fantastic resources on our website. That's what's really changed with this event. We've had a new supervisor for the last couple of years. She's doing a spectacular job. There are videos posted on our website of training videos about how to pin bugs and other things that you need to know for that event. So you ought to be looking for that. There's a study guide specifically that goes with that. Charged up is very much a hands-on, learn a skill. It's, you know, they're, you're do, using things, right? And so there's got to be a lot of great websites out there where the kids can experiment with things, you know, with online diagrams and, and whatever, right? So uh, we've, our supervisor ran a workshop a, a few years ago for Charged Up. And we're not asking him to run that workshop again because the video of that workshop is already posted on our website. And there are many other events that already have workshops where you can see a workshop we ran two years ago for Crime Busters or for Starry Starry Night or whatever. So you ought to be looking for those. Water Rockets is an interesting topic because there's a lot of people who haven't grown up. And there are people all over the country doing Water Rockets. And there's a lot of resources out there. So there's good stuff to find. Be careful because it, they don't all, they're out just having fun. They're not necessarily following the Science Olympiad rules. So when you do find a resource, make sure you're not wandering out outside the boundaries of what is defined for our event, okay? All right, let's talk about the stages of the season because how you coach the kids and what you might want to do with them, I think, should change. When you're getting started, you're probably working with the kids more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Not that there are only one of them in the room at a time, but the, the kinds of things that you're doing with them are helping them demonstrate whether they individually understand what's going on. So I want to know if, if Billy is, his, is, is absorbing the content and understanding it as well as Susie, right? Because I, I, they might need different levels of help. As the season goes on, when they get, when they get to the tournament, they're not going to be just individuals. They're going to compete as a team. And so you also need to work with them and talk with them about how are they together going to be effective as a team. So for instance, many of our, our events use a zip grade form where the, somebody's got to fill out a little bubble on there and give an answer. Your answer is B or C <laughs> or whatever. And only one student can hold the pencil and hold the form right, and fill that out. So before they get into the room, they need to know who's got that job, right? And that might imply something for, you know, you know the balance of what's going on. So if, I'm, if I've got a, maybe a, a fifth grade student and a fourth grade student who are on that event team and my fifth grade student's done it before, then I probably want the fourth grade student holding the pencil, right? Because I want my fifth grade student on point looking at the questions and leading the leading the answering process, right? And so what, and what happens if there's, uh, if there's disagreement between your two kids? How does, how does that get resolved? If there's arguing going on in the event room, I can tell you it's not good. No, no team was ever successful if an argument broke out during the test, right? So you want to anticipate those things, talk to them. What, you know, what if there is disagreement, what, do you, what are you going to tell them to do? How, do, they, how, do they, how are they prepared to resolve that? Okay, things like that. So, 
that red block, you know, that's all you're practicing. But before you get to tournament, you want to spend some time helping them learn how to compete. You might, after they've learned the anatomy material, you might want to give them a practice test <coughs> where the two of them have to behave in the way that you want them to do. Give them a zip grade form so they've already used a zip grade form. That's not the first time they're seeing it when they get to, the, when they get to our tournament. Okay? All right. I've already burned all the way through everything here. So I'm happy to answer your questions. Who has a question? Sir. So here's going to be the coach. Are you, uh, is it just supposed to be you only you, or is it OK if the other parents get involved, or is it just solely on you as the coach? So the question is, if, if I'm the event coach, what's, what's the potential role maybe of the other adults, like the adults for the other student yeah, on the I'm team, right? Right. So. I'm going to put my head coach hat on. Imagine I'm your head coach. And so what I'd be telling you is, um, you're, first of all, you're responsible for leading your event. If I've, asked you, if I've uh, recruited you to be my event coach, number one is I expect you to be in charge of that event. If you can be more successful by involving the parents of the other student in what's going on, I'm happy about that. The other parents might have an event to coach as well. Right, and so there's also the balance of, you know, I want I want them to be leading their event, so I don't want you to be distracting them from that either, right? So there's a balance going on, but more power to you if you can get the other parents involved and and they can be engaged. But keep your lead. I want as a head coach, I want you to keep the leadership of your event because you're the person I'm going to talk to when I want to know what's happening. All right, another question. Yes. Will there be any changes to the event rules between now and tournament time? And if there are, will there be notifications? There might be changes to the event rules. They're relatively rare. Um, we always publish them on the FAQ. And we, if, if it's a, so there are rule, so let me distinguish between a rule change and a rule clarification. Sometimes people ask a smart question and say, hey, what about this? And those are the kinds of things that crop on the, up on the FAQ. But if we've, if we've found a fundamental problem with the rules and we change it, we try to highlight that. We'll send out uh, a notice to the head coaches. There's also another email distribution list that we collect emails from that you all are eligible to sign up for. Uh, so we might broadcast it there. And so we'll try to get that information out. Um, the only event that it's happened for in, in recent, last year we started, a, a, we're experimenting with a computer science event and we had a load of rule changes it was a little bit embarrassing um, but we're learning right and so we're, we're running as a demonstration event again this year uh, I'm really feel I feel much more confident because we're we're getting better at it and so I don't think there are going to be event rule changes but if we do we'll we will we want you to know about it other questions yes It's going to be a good question. Yeah. What's, like, so my daughter's in fourth grade, and she's at an alternate team. Like, what are the, what are the levels of this? Like, is she against fifth and sixth graders? Is it just fourth graders? And what's an alternate versus an alternate team? OK, so let, let's <laughs> unpack a couple of different things there. We have two divisions. We have a K-5 division and a K-6 division. And so that's a function of the school that your student attends. Right, so we don't, we set a boundary at the, we ask teams not to bring anyone younger than a third grader to compete at the tournament because we're worried about emotional maturity. So your teams are populated with students third grade and up potentially. When, but we don't say anything about who gets recruited onto a team. So your student is a fourth grader, that makes sense. We have a lot of fourth grade students competing. If you're on a K-5 school, your fourth grader could be competing with students up through fifth grade. If you're in a K-6 school, which uh, Utica is K-6, there's a couple other uh, districts that are K-6, your student could be competing with somebody as old as a sixth grader. But we don't know, so it's all a function of the individual teams as to who they've recruited onto their teams and who they've assigned to individual events. So it's a bit of mix and match. So the difference between a primary team and an alternate team, we have 76 registered primary teams, and those are what between them uh, consist or 
That's the K5 and K6 division. In addition, as we have space, we allow schools to field like a JV team, or you know, it's the alternate team. These are students who, some of our schools have so many students that want to get involved that they have enough students to form a second team. And so we've allowed them to do that. They're in a totally separate division. So when you get to our tournament in, our Macomb tournament in May, what you're gonna see is that students, the K-5 students are all competing against each other, the K-6 students are competing against each other, and then the students who are on alternate teams are competing against each other. Did I answer your question? Another, any other questions? Yes, way in the back. Talk to your head coach. That's, the fr that's, that's your first best place. What school? Yeah, talk to Amy. Amy. Is Amy your head coach? No, I don't remember. So Amy Laidlaw, maybe. So ask your head coach. She, she's the person who ought to know that. You ought to get the email address and the phone number for that person and get to know them. Because you don't want to relearn the lessons that the person before you learned, right? You want to learn something new, get better. Other questions? Okay, so today, uh, you're, I'll let you go in a second here. You're going to meet with the event supervisors for the individual events that you're coaching. Uh, be nice to them. They're all volunteers as well, right? But ask hard questions, right? You know, ask for clarification. Uh, and have a great day. Thank you very much.